In the last video, we kind of left off traveling from one dimension to the next, or one space to a different space. So we went from a space of 1920 by 1080, and we traveled into a space of one by one. Now we also learned that a number and the value associated with that number are sometimes different. That we want to preserve the value, but that the number is largely insignificant. It's, uh, it's just a name. And so what's happening when we actually normalize? Well, let's look at it mathematically very quickly. And so when we normalize, we're just expressing one number through or relative to a different number. And how do we do that? We do it with division. So we're literally just taking one number, and we're dividing it by another number, and we're expressing the first number through the second number. And so if my name, if my number was 62, and I divided myself by 5, my new name, my new number would be 12.4, 12.4 units of 5. And so when we normalize into a different space or into a different dimension, all we're doing is we're restructuring ourselves so we can express ourselves in terms of the new dimension's units. If we want to play around in this dimension, we have to abide by this dimension's rules or its rule set. And part of its rule set are its x and its y range. Now very quickly, when people say normalizing and they don't specify any sort of range, what they're talking about is 0 to 1. Normalizing isn't unique to 0 to 1, though. You can normalize to any range you want. It's just that when people don't specify a range, the default range is 0 to 1. Now let's look at what normalizing is visually, which is very simple. Let's say we're dealing with two two dimensions. And like that. So this dimension has its own x, y, and of course this dimension has its own x and y. Now let's say we exist here in this dimension. And this is about, let's just say it's like 20% of their x and like 80% of their y. If we wanted to normalize into this dimension, where would we end up? Well, where you end up relative to the boundaries of your new dimension is where you started relative to the boundaries of your old dimension. So we'd end up somewhere maybe here. So we'd still be at 20%, just 20% of the new x and 80% of the new y. Now let's look at some code. This code right here. So all this code does is it draws a line at about the 90% mark, 90% of the x-axis. So this canvas is a default canvas, so of course it goes from 0 to 1. Let's draw that better. It goes from 0 to 1 on the x and 0 to 1 on the y, and we're drawing a line at about 90%. Now what if, and I'll explain uh, closer to the end of the video how to think about it, or how I think about it, what if we sped up the values on the x and the y axes? So we doubled the number of values on the x and doubled the number of values on the y. And so we either transported to or transformed the current dimension into this. The new x axis is 0 to 2. The new y axis is 0 to 2 as well. So whereas in this old dimension, the center was at 0 0.5, 0 0.5, in our new dimension, the center is at 1, 1. And we still want a line at 90%. So let's transform this dimension by speeding up the values. That's this line here, line 10. So the double amount of values, and our line disappears. Our 90% line disappears. Where did the 90% line go? Well, this 0 0.9 business, that was relative to the first dimension. That's relative to a range of 0 to 1. So 0 0.90 here is also 90% of 1. But 0 0.90, maybe that's like here, it's not 90% of 2. So in order to get a a line to show up at 90% of our new dimension, we need to figure out what 90% of 2 is, not what 90% of 1 is. 90%. So what's 90% of 2? Well, it's 1.8. So if we comment out this line here and then comment the line out beneath it, we should get our line. And there we go. We get our line at 90% of the new range, which is 2. And so though these numbers look different. The number, the face, the name is different. This is 1.8. The value stays the same. They're both 90% of their x's. Now let's look at some other code. So what this code does is it draws a blue background and then based on the mouse's coordinates, specifically its x-coordinate, the horizontal of my mouse, my cursor, 
it's supposed to introduce red into the blue. And so we should get a blue into like purple and then in, eventually into pink. And so when I drag my mouse to the right, we should get blue into purple into pink. Let's see what we get. All right, well, we get the pink, but why is it changing instantly like that? Why isn't it tracking with my mouse? Well, this corner of the canvas is zero, zero but this mouse coordinate hasn't been normalized. So this mouse coordinate is registering as, I have this uh, 1920 by 1080 resolution on my monitor. So this is maybe like 500, 700. 500 and 700 are well outside the range of zero to one. So we have to normalize the mouse so that our canvas knows where the mouse is. So that's the next piece of code here. And so we normalize the mouse by dividing the mouse's coordinates on the monitor's resolution by the resolution of our canvas and we get this effect here where it tracks with my x axes or my x coordinate on my mouse we introduce more and more red to the blue we get our purple at the, about the mid here and i keep going and we get the pink now normalizing is very important guys this concept comes up over and over again in uh fragment shader programming. Sometimes you want to alter the, the dimension on purpose, like our 0 to 1 to 0 to 2. Sometimes you're using a function to draw something on screen, and unavoidably that function alters your dimension for you. And so it's very important that you, uh, you keep track of your range, because you might have a point in your head that you think is going to track on your canvas, but the point in your head is not the point at play in the dimension you're in. And so there's this this incoherence. It's not going to work out the way you expect it to work. So you have to keep track of your range. And if you want to play in a certain dimension, you have to pay the price or scale to the range of that new dimension. So how should we go about thinking about this, uh, this normalizing stuff? Well, I'm going to give you an example or a way of thinking about it, and then I'll tell you how I think about it. So let's get some space here. So one way of thinking about normalizing. When we normalize, we're basically moving from one range of numbers to a different range of numbers. Let's say we're operating in two dimensions. And we have an x and a y axis. We have our center, our origin here. And it goes from negative infinity to positive infinity and negative infinity to positive infinity. But we just want to play in this space here. And this space goes from negative 4 to positive 4. Let's say negative 4 to positive 4. Now, mathematically, what we call this is like a valid subspace of R2. R being real numbers. So all the real numbers are available to us. For the mathy people, we have the zero vector. It's closed under addition. It's closed under multiplication. And we can span the whole space. So this makes it a valid subspace of R2. So you can think of this, uh, this, this space here, not as another dimension, but as a region of our general dimension here. Now, why don't I think of it like that? I think of this negative four by four, or four by four region as a different dimension just overlaid onto our initial dimension. Now, why do I think of it like that? Well, later on, and I think, I don't know, four or five videos, we're gonna come across a piece of code, and that code it's going to break up our dimension into four quadrants, and it's going to draw a pattern in each dimension, the same pattern in each dimension. Now, how it accomplishes this is it treats each quadrant as its own little dimension. But the problem with treating each quadrant as its own region is that in this quadrant, we have a zero, zero. In this quadrant, we have a point, zero, zero. In this quadrant, we have a point, zero, zero. In this quadrant, we also have a point, zero, zero. Now, mathematically, this is incoherent. In infinity, even though it's infinity, you only ever have one zero zero. You only have only ever have one five point seven eight two. So you can't have in one single dimension a repeat of the exact same number. This is why I think about when we isolate a region here, we're not really isolating a region. We're creating a new dimension with new constraints and new rules to the game. And we're just overlaying it on the initial dimension so that we can have one dimension has a zero, zero. A different dimension, same type, same R2 type, but it also has its zero, zero. A, another dimension has its zero, zero, and another dimension has its zero, zero. And so thinking about introducing, creating new dimensions and just overlaying them on your initial dimension, we can even overlay another dimension here when we get into more programming or shader programming. 
but overlaying created dimensions onto dimensions, I think is a better way of thinking about this whole uh, uh, normalizing thing. And I know I've said it before, I don't know how many times, but I'll repeat it again. If you guys can wrap your head, your heads around what these two videos on normalizing are, are talking about, what they're trying to say, I promise you, fragment shader programming becomes so much easier. You just got to be sure to keep track of your range and pay the price if you want to get into a new dimension and play around with those points. In future videos, I'll be sure to point out when we change the range and when a function changes the range for us. For now, though, this should be enough to, uh, to kind of chew on. So let's summarize the last two videos. What, what do we learn? Well, normalizing is uh, the act of becoming a part of a different range of numbers or a different dimension by scaling yourself to the boundaries of that dimension. And so it's very important that you keep track of your range, uh, whether, it's, uh, whether or not it's self-inflicted. Uh, and when we want to roll or play in another dimension, you have to pay the price to get into that dimension. You can't just use whatever numbers you want. You got to keep track of your range and pay your price. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about functions, but not functions in the traditional programming sense, but uh, shaping functions. And so the basic eight functions of Algebra 1, I think Algebra 2, so your linear, your quadratic, your third degree, exponential, logarithmic, and your sine, cos, and tan. But don't worry, it sounds math heavy. It's not math heavy. I'm not going to get into how the functions work. I'm just going to break down why we use these functions in this uh, in shader programming. And as always, if you find value in any of this, comment, like, share, subscribe, whichever platform you're watching this on, and I will see you guys in the next one.